Troops are pretty important to 40k lists. In fact, basically every list in the game has to have them. And what you'll find is that a lot of times, the better your troops are, the better your faction becomes. So let's talk about the top five troops choices in Warhammer 40k and exactly what makes them so great. What's up folks, welcome back to Tactical Tortoise. My name is Trevi, and today we're gonna be talking about the regular old dudes of the 41st millennium, the good old troop options. You'll find these units in basically every single Warhammer 40,000 list, so they're one of the most ubiquitous and important types of units to have. So I think it's important to talk about which are some of the best ones. Before we get into the video, quick reminder, if you like this style of video, go ahead and drop a like on the video, drop a subscribe on the channel, I really appreciate it, and it helps let me know what kind of videos you like, and then I'll do more of those videos. Also, I want to let everybody know I've moved all of my live streaming over to Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Tactical Tortoise TV is where it's at, and I play almost every day Warhammer 40k. It's some beautiful poetry for you there. It's a real good time, and all my VODs are making it over to the Tactical Tortoise TV YouTube channel as well a couple weeks after they go live. So if you don't catch the stream live, you'll be able to see those VODs there. So I appreciate it if you jump over and, and, and grab give that a subscription. Also, for channel members and also patrons, the first couple episodes of the Advanced Tactics series are up and available for you right now. So if you go jump on those services, you'll get access to those. So if you want to hear some in-depth, super crunchy talk about missions, go ahead and jump over on that series. It's going to be a good time. But anyway, let's talk about troops today. <laughs> it's more, more rhyming going on. Look at Biko. I'm on fire. Troops are pretty important because... Oftentimes, they'll give lists access to Objective Secured, which is like a super important ability to have in 9th edition 40k. They also fill your detachment slots. So if you're trying to get patrols or battalions to be as efficient with CP as you possibly can, a lot of times you need to spend some points on troops. They're kind of attacks on those super good detachments. But if you can get other use out of them, if they do anything else for you besides just fill those slots and, and obsect some objectives, it's like totally gravy. You're you're really killing it. That's the dream at that point. Put those guys on the table and they maybe they kill something. Whoa, that would be wild. So the troops we're talking about today, for the most part, are, are actually going to be the ones that you get that extra little oomph out of when you put them in your list. And the criteria that we're going to rate them on is efficiency. You don't want to spend too many points on these guys because that, that defeats the purpose. Resilience. You want them to stand on an objective and not get killed off. That would be bad. Speed. You want them to actually get to the objectives and stand there. The X factor. The ability to do other stuff besides just those three things. If your unit can fight, if it can do a cool ability, if it can perform actions really well, if, if it just moves into table quarters, but well, that's all good. So we're going to put that in, in, in that little criteria there. And also any other synergies that they have with the faction. A lot of times your faction is going to be built around troops. And so if you have good stratagems, transports for them, cool interactions with your characters, we'll talk about those. I'm also going to be combining a couple entries here that are very similar and kind of fill the same role, especially in a single faction. So they don't have to like put them into separate entries. That would be just sort of annoying and boring. So some of these are going to have a little slash room, and we'll talk about two different unit types that are basically the same. But without further ado, let's get into it. Top five troops in 40k, and also some other ones, because we're talking about honorable mentions here as well. And the number five entry is the Humble Pox Walker from the Death Guard Codex. These things are ridiculously good for troops options. They are super cheap. They are very resilient. Toughness four, six plus damage ignore. Fearless, so even if you kill that bunch of them, they don't run away, which is an easy way to get rid of these big horde units. They don't care about that. And once you play against them on the table, you're gonna be like, oh man, like there's one dude left in that unit after I killed 19 of them, and he's not going anywhere. He's just gonna sit there obsecting that objective. That's annoying. And what's even more annoying about that guy is you could just spend a CP the next turn to regenerate a bunch of those dudes. It's wild. They're so good. They also punch back a little bit. They do a little bit of damage in melee. They got two attacks each, which is pretty good. And with Death Guard buffs, you can increase your strength, give them rerolls to wound, let them deal mortal wounds. Plus, they're reducing your toughness value if you're in a pure Death Guard army. They just got a lot of stuff going for them. Downside, they are super duper slow. Move four sucks. And a lot of times, like, you'll, they'll be on back objectives, but it takes them a while even get to get to the center objectives of the table. So that's not that good. Also, another downside, you can't bring too many of them if you are bringing a Death Guard detachment, because you can only have one for each bubonic Astartes unit that you bring in your army. So they are uh, limited a little bit there. Although that's 
less of a downside because you're probably going to be wanting to bring those terminators and stuff anyway and also if you could spam like 120 of these things it'd probably be a pretty good list so it makes a lot of sense that they are restricted in that way Number four, we have the Golden Banana Boys, the Custodian Guard. Also, a uh, special mention here for the Sagittarum Guard as well. These are basically the only troops options allowed for Adeptus Custodies, but oh boy, are they real good. They are ridiculously hard to kill. I mean, like, insanely hard to kill. Their defensive stat line is great. T5, 2 plus save, 4 plus invulnerable save. If you get the Storm Shield on the Custodian Guard squad, they're going to do a 3 plus invulnerable save. What's punching through that? They can give you minus 1 strength. The Shadowkeeper's chat. They can uh, Emperor's Auspice to stop you from rerolling. Arcana Genetic Alchemy to give them transhuman physiology uh, effectively. They have a bunch of stuff going for this. There's a Vexillus Praetor. They're minus 1 to hit. They're just so freaking tanky. They also punch good. They got a bunch of attacks at a pretty decent profile. Even just the Sagittarum Guard, if you give them the Misericordia, just swinging at strength 5 AP2 at 4 attacks each. Like, that's solid for a unit that has a giant gun. Also, the Sagittarum Guard have a giant gun. They have a 2 damage, 3 shot heavy bolter profile and a 3 damage combi weapon profile, both at assault, which means they can advance and shoot both of them without really suffering an additional penalty. It's crazy the amount of damage these guys put out, especially considering that you're probably bringing like two or three just to fill out your troops allotment. Downsides, there's a couple of them. First off, they're ridiculously expensive. They're super expensive. So they don't work really well on the efficiency standpoint. Although they're resilient and deal a bunch of damage for their points cost, that is a high points cost to bring troops in. They're also a little overshadowed by the rest of the army being objective secured. You don't need troops as much in a Custodes army because all of your other infantry is just doing that job for you. They're just there to unlock your efficient attachments. Also downside, they're a little bit slow. They're only move six. They don't really have a good way to get up the table. Their transport's really expensive, so they're just going to be kind of foot slogging around. Not that that is really a danger to them because they're not going to get shot off the table before they get there, but it is a downside. Moving up to number three, let's talk about some space marines today. We got incursors. A little bit of an honorable mention here for infiltrators because they're basically the same unit and come in the same kit. Incursors are much more... Efficient, 105 points a unit, 21 points a model. Infiltrator's a lot more expensive, 24 points a model for 120 points per unit. But if you need the Omni Scrambler rule, Infiltrators are, are super duper good. If you don't need it, eh, just stick with the Incursors, but I always thought Infiltrators was worth mentioning as well. They have a decent offensive profile, especially against other infantry. So if you're fighting other troops choices, especially, like Incursors and Infiltrators will just cut them up. You know, like little 10-man guard squads or whatever, they just like shoot them with the bolt gun, stab them with the knives. They got a bunch of attacks. They're a decent AP value, especially on the incursors and uh they have some cool abilities infiltrators auto wound their hit rolls on sixes incursors ignore dense cover which is a, an interesting interaction sometimes comes up they also have awesome access to good defensive stratagems they both have the smoke screen keyword they have the primaris keyword for transhuman physiology and the piece de resistance Concealed position deployment. They get to deploy up in the middle of the table. So they can drop banners on middle objectives. They can screen out the entirety of the table. They can screen out enemy forward deployers and drop pods and stuff like that. They're just so freaking useful for... 10 more points than an Assault Intercessor squad? You spend an extra 10 points and you get a unit that's better at shooting. Isn't as good at melee, of course, but also gets that smokescreen keyword and that forward deployment. Oh my god. There's almost no downsides to these guys. Like, they're not fast, but it doesn't really matter because they start up the table. In cursors, at least, if you're bring, building a Space Marine army and there's a battalion in it, at least two of those troops options should be in cursors. Like, don't even look at the rest of them. Maybe you got an Assault Intercessor squad to sit on your back objective or something, but in cursors are just so solid. Moving on to number two, we have a little bit of an opposite unit one that is not indeed not fast it's the rex from drukari this is going to be an interesting video because like in less than a week the new drukari codex comes out so i'm hoping it uh, doesn't actually change what racks do but oh boy do racks have a ridiculous defensive profile for their cost when their buffs are online toughness five with a four plus invulnerable save are you freaking kidding me on an eight point model that's ridiculous that's so good they're also ridiculously fast when you combine them with the other Drukari buffs. You can put them in transports like Venoms. Not that you're necessarily going to, but you can. You can also give them a gun so that they can fire and fade and move really quickly up the table. They also punch okay. Not, not great, but they do all right. Two attacks each with a poison weapon hitting on three. So, like, that's solid. They'll chew up some, some other light infantry. And they'll even put some damage on big monsters and characters and stuff just because they're always wounding on fours. No AP on them. It's a little sucky, but eight points a model. Like, can you really complain? For two attacks, too? 
They also can respawn with Black Corn and Copians. Just pick the unit off the table and drop them back on a table edge. That's super useful, especially if your opponent doesn't wipe the unit out, which oftentimes they don't. And putting objective secured units, like in your opponent's deployment zone or off their table edges or something, it's like really obnoxious. It's, it's difficult to ignore those guys, especially if they like come in within nine of an objective, make their charge, and get in there and, and touch it. You're like, ah, this is annoying. Please stop. There is a little bit of a downside, and it's not really a mechanical one. It's kind of a, a meta downside. And that is that right now... I guess pre-New Drakari Codex. No one actually knows how big of a unit these guys can take. One play says 10. One play says 20. Who knows? But I'm sure we'll know when, once the New Drakari Codex comes out. I don't know if they keep all of these special abilities and interactions with them, but uh, I imagine that they'll still probably be pretty good. It's a pretty good unit archetype to have. All right, before we get to the number one troops option in Warhammer 40k, let's talk about some honorable mentions. I'm going to let my rampant bias flag fly here and talk first about some Tyranid units. Let's talk about Ripper Swarms. These are some of the least exciting infantry that you'll ever see on the table. They have no offensive output, no defensive abilities, but they are ridiculously efficient. They hit that efficiency and that X factor criteria perfectly. 12 points a model, you only need three of them, so if you wanna fill out your detachment, your little battalion or your patrol or something, mm, just 36 points, done. They also deep strike innately. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to strategic reserve them. You don't have to spend a CP, they just, come up off the table somewhere. So they're good for scoring engage in all fronts, line breakers, stuff like that. They can also project like weird auras like Deepest Shadow out over your opponent's army to trigger those stratagems on them. There's not really much they can do about it. So good. We'll stick around with the Tyranid theme, talk about Tyranid Warriors as well. Post-January FAQ, Tyranid Warriors are pretty decent resilience in a lot of attacks, but also really low points cost. 17 points a model for these guys for four attacks with Scything Talons and three wounds. Pretty solid. Four plus save isn't that great, but you can buff that with some other abilities. Unyielding Chitin for minus one damage against ranged attacks. Really solid as a lot of people are packing two damage weapons. And that just cuts that amount of damage right in half. And you can throw a defensive buff like Enhanced Resistance for Ignore AP 1 and 2. Or Dynamic Camouflage for some additional cover saves, although that's a little bit less good. But either of those, plus throwing damage ignore rolls on them with High Fleet Leviathan or Casting Catalyst or something like that, can make them like super duper tanky. And especially since they'll engage a lot of other obsec units and actually fight them to death uh, with their just boat boatload of attacks is, uh, is pretty decent. Downside, anti-tank weapons just like totally wreck them. And those are pretty popular right now. It's hard to play a Space Marine list that doesn't have like 12 multi melters in it. And those 12 multi melters will super duper kill a unit of Tyranid Warriors in one go without breaking a sweat. So some downsides to them. They're not quite as efficient against multi-damage, but uh, they can hold their own. Next up, Astra Militarum, the lowly infantry squad. This one is a little bit of a sad story because they're kind of expensive right now, which is too bad. And they also have like no offensive or defensive abilities to speak of at all. They're just, like, they shoot guns sometimes, and they can shoot other, like, Toughness 3 infantry pretty okay, especially in combination with orders, but they're only, like, a Toughness 3 with a 5-up save. They'll just get shot to death by random stuff and die. The upside is that they do fill out those detachments, and as Imperial Soup is pretty good at dropping in, like, three infantry squads and some Manticores, it's pretty solid. And you get those orders on them to double move. You just get a, a, a not super expensive infantry squad that can move, like, 18 inches pretty reliably and that's just that's just really solid getting the ability to just chuck a chuck object models into your opponent's objectives and break banners and contest their objectives and stuff like that is super useful and a lot of times a lot of lists don't have the random anti-infantry firepower to deal with like the 30 guardsmen sitting in your back line before you shoot all of the stuff that's actually fighting you and those guardsmen are going to get the chance to come in and, and grab some objectives from you which is pretty obnoxious let's talk about necron warriors these things by themselves, they don't have a particularly impressive stat line. They're also a little expensive, but they combo ridiculously well with both offensive and defensive buffs. You can put the Chronomancer buff on them for five plus invulnerable save, which is so difficult to punch through. They also have a billion ways to reanimate themselves once you kill them. And as long as you don't one shot the unit, they just like will never die. They just live around forever. Unless your opponent has an insane volume of fire at like just the right profile to kill them. It's so difficult to remove Necron warriors from embedding themselves in your army. They also can sometimes deal a little bit of damage. Gauss Reapers are a pretty solid profile. And if you're playing Eternal Conquerors, getting the ability to count as two models for objective secured means they just hold objectives forever. You have to put like 40 models on an objective to steal it away from a brick of Necron warriors. They're not very fast, but those Reapers being assault weapons means they can advance around the table you can throw some speed buffs on them and having a, a access to veil of darkness for that good old teleporting around the table to, to run onto the objectives that you really need to 
pretty good. Pretty good. So Necron Warriors in a vacuum, probably not a great troops option, but once you add all of the synergies in together with them, oh boy, do they go absolutely ham. One last honorable mention I want to throw in here are Cataphron Breachers. These guys are a little bit of an interesting case. They are super resilient and pretty efficient for their points cost, coming in at only 35 points a model for three wounds of toughness five with a three plus save and an invulnerable save. Downside, they're relatively slow and low model count, so they don't typically outnumber people on objectives. However, they have a bunch of really decent ranged attacks as well as some incredible synergies and melee attacks between their arc rifles and their arc claws. If you build a list around Cataphron Breachers being really sick, they're incredible. To be honest, they might even have deserved a place on the list outside of the honorable mentions. Not 100% sure because you do need to put a lot of thought into making them work. But once you do, oh boy, are Cataphron Breachers sick. And with that, let's move on to the number one troops option in Warhammer 40k. At least in this YouTuber's opinion. And that is the Harlequin Troop player. The trooper. The... The Harlequin Troops option. They only have one, so it's hard to get it confused with anything else. But the unit and the models composing the unit have two different names. It's very confusing. Anyway, the downside of Harlequin Troops is that they are relatively inefficient points per model. You're spending like 20 to 25 points per, depending on how you load them out, which is like pretty expensive. However, for that, oh boy, do you get some benefits. They are ridiculously fast move eight, advance and do whatever they want for the most part, fall back, also do whatever they want. They're ridiculously fast to get up the table. You have Twilight Pathways, you have Webway Warriors, you have the strat to advance a full six inches for one CP. They just got everything going for them in terms of getting around. They also sometimes just don't die. They have a four plus invulnerable save. That's not the best defensive tech ever, but it keeps them going. They're also ridiculously hard to kill if they're in their Star Weaver. Oftentimes you don't want to kill the Star Weaver because the players will just get out and then their objective, their objective securing the objective away from you. And if you don't kill them, they're just going to shoot them with, shoot you with their fusion pistols. Like there's no, it's a lose lose situation when you fight against Harlequin troopers. And depending on their loadout as well, they can deal a bunch of damage in melee. They can get a billion attacks, full rerolls to wound, some rerolls to hit, sometimes bonuses to wound, fighting twice, curtain falling around the table. They're just so good, and and you can bring them either in units of five to jump in those transports and just be annoying contesting units, or big units of ten that come in and charge units and fight it with a thousand attacks. And get all the buffs and deal a ton of damage they're just ridiculously hard to pin down they can move over everything and they're a real backbone for the harlequin army right now and one of if not the single biggest reason that harlequins are the powerhouse faction that they are currently in the metagame harlequin troopers are obnoxious to play against and especially the ones in star weavers and uh, it's it's just miserable trying to kill these things. <laughs> Once you get through all their defensive stats, their penalties to hit, penalties to wound from the shadows here, four plus and vulnerable save. You gotta get through minus six inches of range. They just feel way more resilient than that little toughness three, four plus save profile would, would make you expect. But anyway, that's gonna be it for the top five troops options in Warhammer 40K in this video today. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any troop options that you really like and you think should have made this list, go ahead and drop those down in the comments. Yell at me. Tell me I'm a big dummy for forgetting about them. And uh, and if you have any suggestions for future top five videos you want to see, I don't know. Maybe throw those down there as well. Maybe I'll maybe I'll read them. That'd be cool. Thanks for watching the video all the way to the end. And big thanks to my patrons and supporters over at patreon.com slash tactical tortoise. And also YouTube channel members that you can join in the link down below the description. Super appreciative of those folks. And they get lots of sweet benefits for, uh, for signing up and supporting the channel. Really appreciate it. Those people are all incredible, and I love them. Thanks again for watching all the way to the end. Thanks for watching Tactical Tortoise. Stay tuned for some more sweet Warhammer 40k content in the not-too-distant future. Remember to keep it classy, folks. And another thing, have happy wargaming.